Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the Atari 50, or oh, sorry, well, yeah, it is Atari 50, an Atari Flashback 50th Anniversary Edition console thing. Is that in shot? Yes, it is. My partner bought this recently on sale at a department store here called Kmart. And before the Americans get a bit rolled up, Kmart is very common over here and actually quite successful compared to its American counterpart. Regardless, she paid not very much. I think it was under $50. I can't remember exactly how much. She sent me a message after she bought it and she asked, did I make a mistake? And I said, is it by At Games? And she said, yes. And I said, probably. But today we're going to have a bit of a look at it and form our own opinions. Now, because it is at games, I'm not writing a script, basically, because at games, frankly, and pardon the French, is a bit shit. So I'm doing this more of a, in more of a Sunday quickie sort of format, although I do have the production values up pretty high. I've got two cameras running, I've got two lights, various background lights, it's more effort than what I usually put in, and probably more effort than what at games deserves. But I guess we'll see, won't we? So let's have a look at the box itself before we have a look at the console itself. As we can see, the box art's actually quite nice, especially on this side. I guess I probably should have showed you that side first of all the artwork on it. So this comes with 110 games built in, plus two standard joystick controllers. Now there is a gold version of this that I found online I think just off the top of my head that has 130 games, but as well as the two joystick controllers, it also comes with two paddle controllers, which um, makes me think about some of the games on here a little bit. Like I was having a look through, it shows a selection of games that are here. And of course we see Night Driver. Now I bought Night Driver on Atari. I have the physical game over there on the shelf and I couldn't play it because I don't own paddle controllers. So are they including Night Driver on this, even though they don't provide paddle controllers? Presumably, they are compatible. Can you buy them separately? I'm actually not sure. I didn't think to look that up. I'll look that up now and put the information on screen now. But regardless, let's have a bit more of a look around the box. So as we can see, it outputs HDMI at games. Ooh, we'll see, we'll see at games. Um, and I think there was some more information here. Yep, so two wired controllers, 720, sorry, 720p HD output through the HDMI port. There's a save state feature and there's also a rewind feature. There's a dedicated button for that, I believe, but we'll have a closer look at that in a second. Of course, it comes with a console, comes with the games in the console, comes with the two controllers, comes with a power adapter and a manual, but doesn't come with a HDMI cable. But at this stage, if you don't have a drawer full of them, then quite frankly, I envy you. Regardless, let's uh, pull it out of the box. Even though it's not actually in the box, the box is empty, that's a lie, but I'll show you the console and the controllers now. Okay, here we are. Quite small, of course, but the build quality, just first impressions, is not too bad. To be honest, it feels pretty solid, obviously made out of plastic, but has this nice fake wood trim at the front with the uh, Atari 50 logo there. And then we have a selection of buttons. So obviously there's the uh, on off switch, there's the left and right difficulty switches, and then these push switches, which obviously don't stay in place for game select and game reset. And really there's not much else. We look around the back, we have the controller ports, the HDMI output, and the micro, uh, micro USB power output. A little bit of information on the back here, nothing too interesting. Obviously it's Atari flashback, it's got the model number there, where it was manufactured, some FCC stuff, and where it was distributed in Aussie land. Distributed by Futuretronics. Is that the same Futuretronics used to make like crappy controllers and memory cards back in the PS1 era? Is that the same company? Was that even called Futuronics? If you're an Australian and you know what I'm talking about, please correct me in the comments or confirm what I'm saying. Just a quick note on the power adapter, which it does come with. But like I said, it's micro USB, so 
if for some reason this doesn't work or it goes missing, it won't be too much of an issue to get that replaced. Hopefully yours is a bit more in focus than mine. Um, let's see, come on. Let's read the good bits. What does this say here? Five volts, so USB and a one amp draw. So even the oldest, crappiest phone chargers will turn this thing on. Onto the controllers. First, I just want to take a minute to note the controller port. As you can see, it's the same. Um, how many pins is that? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The same nine pin plug that you found with the original console. So that makes me wonder, will the original controllers work? Or alternatively, if I bought an original paddle controller, could I plug that in and would it work? I don't have a paddle controller to test that today, but I do have an original controller. So I want to test that on this. And I also want to test one of these bad boys on my original Atari 2600, which could be interesting. Sorry for knocking the camera just then. Anyway, um, as we can see, I don't have the lighting set up very good here, but we've got a menu button, start and select, and the rewind feature, which obviously aren't on a traditional Atari 2600 controller. Usually you just have the fire button or the action button and the directional joystick. It is cool that it comes with two controllers so you can play with your friends and family if you have any. This one looks more like a traditional controller. It doesn't have the extra buttons. This is probably the one I'll try on my OG console to see what happens. But yeah, let's plug it in and see how it plays. Okay, and we're back. It's plugged in, we're ready to go. Um, straight away, we've got very chipper music. We've got some instructions there on the bottom. Obviously the joystick to move, the start to quick launch, fire to select, and you can change pages. So, so here we have it in alphabetical order. Recently played, so I can see what my partner's been playing. Uh, she told me she liked Adventure, and apparently Adventure 2 is also on here, which was a homebrew release from, you know, a certain amount of years ago, so... Um, so we got Atari games. <clears throat> so these are all just the, uh... All the ones you'd expect from Atari directly. We got, you know, Breakout, Centipede... Might as well just scroll through all of them. Saboteur... Secret Quest, Solaris. Yars Revenge, that's pretty cool. And Yars Return as well. So a pretty select, pretty, sorry, my, <laughs> um, a pretty uh, full on selection of games. Um, here we go, paddle games. So it's good they've put them in their own category at least, but I can't play them without a paddle controller. Um, looks like they've only got... Oop, okay, so... Using this to navigate's not that great, I'm going to be honest. Why isn't that going to the second page? It says there's two pages there, but it's not letting me scroll across. That's... interesting. Oh, here we go. I have to scroll down, then go right. I feel like with the Atari games, it was just letting me... Oh, maybe not. So I feel like I was able to just continue going right and it just... Alright, maybe I'm just going nuts. Don't worry about it. Uh, let's go down to the settings so we can change the bezels if we like. I guess that must be as you're actually playing. What else do we have? Yeah, they're pretty generic. That's like full on Windows XP right there. <laughs> Windows Media Center. We'll just keep to the black bezel for now. Um, we've got some save state management. Basically means you can just delete all the saves if you want. And you can turn the background music on and off. Go down to the about. We've got a couple of QR codes. Um, so basically that takes you to atgames.net. The at Games flashback zone is your one-stop destination for product support accessory availability, so maybe they do sell accessories, social media information, and more! And then you can also register the product, but who does that, honestly? Um, it's got a firmware version there. I wonder if you can update the firmware somehow. I wonder if that micro USB port is just for power or if it accepts data as well. 
maybe you can plug like an on-the-go cable in there or something like that. Anyway, let's play something. Um, there really is quite a lot of choice. Let's play, let's play Tempest. Let's see how that goes. Select. Oh, okay, we get a little information screen here. Clear the screen of enemies on closed tubes or open play fields. Move freely along the edges of the play field to target and shoot each enemy. If you're in a tight spot, use your super zapper to clear the screen. That gives us instructions here, so we can... So it just says it's single player. Select button to change between the games. Joystick to move. And the difficulty switches. Press start to begin play. Oh, fire to play. Alright, the background music has stopped. That's good. That was getting a bit annoying. It's good that you can turn that off. So far, I'm just getting a blank screen. Is that because of my... Oh, it's got something to do with my um capturing. My capture device doesn't like it. Oh no. <laughs> um, yeah, crap. What a disaster. Maybe if I just unplug the HDMI cable in and plug it back in. The TV is saying unsupported, even though it's a 720p thing being sent through a Elgato. Oh, please work. My whole video falls apart otherwise. <laughs> I don't want to have to, like, record the screen. Alright. The whole thing's just gone black now. <laughs> Crap. Okay, we're in. I selected this because I've never actually played this before. I probably should have played something I was familiar with. But good ideas aren't for today. Anyway, let's... um. Oh yeah, so you can change the settings there. That little on-screen thing comes up. That's pretty cool. You can select the game. So... Cycling one to four, I'll just go one. Then usually you push game reset to actually start the game. And we're playing. Um, don't have any sound though. I don't know if there's supposed to be sound. Surely there's sound. Um, I don't know if that's the issue of my game capture again, or the issue of the flashback. I will test this independently later on, and I will let you know. Um, but yeah, as we can see, it's working, and let's push this uh, this rewind button. Look at that, it's like rewinding through the gameplay. It's pretty cool, I guess. Um, if we bring up the menu by pushing the menu button, we can uh, create a save if we want. Oops, oh, I just turned on. It's a little bit laggy, not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, it's quite laggy. I personally don't like scan lines, so I'm just gonna keep that turned off. Let's create a save. Oh yeah, it looks like we got five slots, even more. Yeah, no, five slots, that should be enough per game, I would think. And there we go, we've created a save slot. Let's, uh, let's die. And let's try and resume how do we resume the save slot? So fire is to save. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's just loaded that up. How cool is that? All right, I might just uh, jump into a game I am familiar with now. Um, and I think that will be more fairer of a review. All right, we're in Missile Command, my personal favorite for the system. And yeah, I'm not getting any sound. I'm going to guess this is probably from, I reckon it's something my Game Capture HD is doing. Um, I do have a newer Elgato, but I've only got one USB 3 port on my laptop, which is currently being used by the Brio 4K webcam. Um, so yeah, kind of disappointing. There's no sound coming through right now. Let me just check the levels of the software for the Elgato. I mean, there's definitely sound right now. I can tell you that for a certain fact. So yeah, I might have to ditch using the capture, but otherwise the game plays fine. I've played this on real hardware before and it's 
as responsive as you'd expect for a game that's 40 years old, basically. Um, not really much else to say. Like I said, the menus are a bit laggy. That's just about the only complaint I have so far. It does kind of suck that there's no paddle controls, but anyway, I'm going to switch the camera onto the TV. We'll see if the, the sound works properly. And then I'm going to try out one of my OG controllers on the console and see if it works. Okay, so apologies for just recording the screen like this, but I don't feel like troubleshooting my Elgato at the moment, but I can show you that the sound does in fact work. And now that you can see that I'm losing as well as here that I'm losing. Okay, I have the original controller here from the 80s. And let's see if it works. So I'm just going to plug this into the secondary controller and then I'm going to go find myself a two-player game because obviously it doesn't have the controls on it like that does for the menu and whatnot. But it'll be interesting to see if it works. Okay, Pong seems like a pretty safe bet. So that is the, the main controller. Oh, boo, nothing's happening. Unless I need to set it first. Two player. Yeah, it looks like I'm playing against the computer there. Let's reset. I've just lost my paddle, so... Oh! It's working! Nice! It's moving that other thing. How cool is that? Yeah. So you can use an original controller with the console. That's pretty cool. That's definitely a plus for this review. Also, not a review, because I didn't write anything. It's first impressions, let's call it that. Okay, so the plan was to try one of these at-game controllers on my original Atari 2600 to see if they would work. And I can't get my Atari to turn on at all. Well, it turns on, but I can't get any video sync out of it. It's just not working today. And to be honest, I just want to wrap this video up. So that'll be interesting to know. I'll figure it out in the future. I'll let you know. But otherwise, that's been the impromptu review of the... Uh, uh, so far away. Atari Flashback 50th Anniversary Edition console by At Games. So, final thoughts. Well, honestly, it's pretty as advertised. There's not really anything wrong with it. It does suck that it has all the paddle games on there, but then doesn't come with the paddle. That's a bit silly in my opinion, but if you can easily get the paddle as an aftermarket accessory, then maybe that's not such a bad thing. There is a good variety of games on there. They all seem to work well. The emulation's pretty good. Um, but as a negative, it was a bit laggy going around the menus. Navigating the menus with the Atari joystick is a bit of a hassle, but it is what it is. Pretty cool that it has the save state and rewind functions. Um, not sure. I've never owned one of these before, so I'm not sure if that's, if, if that, if those have been common features that have been in previous flashbacks. There's been quite a few flashbacks released over the years. Um, otherwise, the price is probably a fair point to mention too. So like I said, my partner bought this on sale. I believe it was under $50 or around the $50 mark. It's probably worth just about that, um, but shop around. I did find one online listing where it was $140 or $130. That, on the other hand, would just frankly be too much. But let me know, let me know what you think. Let me know if you'll be buying one. Could be a cool present for your weird uncle. I don't know. Otherwise, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.